Cruising. We're up to hyperbolas, 9-4, pre-lesson. Let's start. There are two kinds of hyperbolas. This kind, what are they? Two parabolas facing opposite directions. Or up and down. Or two parabolas facing opposite directions right and left. Now, it will help you. You'll, you'll, you'll hear me talk about my Pac-Man logic. And these are going to eat the dots on the y-axis. These are going to eat the dots on the x-axis. And this is significant. So, a couple things. Remember, ellipses had similar stuff. But these were, plus, these were pluses for ellipses. Also, A was always bigger than B for ellipses. We're not doing ellipses. We're doing hyperbolas, but there's so much going on that's similar. I want you to notice something. A is first. A is first. Which way are these Pac-Men eating dots? The X direction. Which way are these Pac-Men eating dots? Y. And A will always be underneath the axis which the Pac-Men are chowing down dots. Same thing here. A is always underneath the axis that the Pac-Men are chowing down dots. By the way, A can be bigger than B, B can be bigger than A, and A could even equal B, but you're never going to see that, I don't think. Okay, here's a little warm-up. I found the best way to teach this stuff the hyperbola is just to do it. Ellipses, I kind of you know, drew some general things, labeled the A's and the B's and the C's and the vertices and the foci. So we're just going to dive right in here and say, hey, let's graph this. Okay, so here we go. And then we've got a whole bunch of questions, and I'm just going to answer those and explain them. So you can go, oh, okay, I see what those mean. So here we go. First of all, what did we say? We said the A squared is first, okay? In other words, it's the positive stuff. It's not underneath the negative stuff. So we can immediately go to a squared is 16. Well, to figure out what a is, we take the square root, we get a is plus or minus 4. Now that tells me to go up and down or right and left. But notice, it's underneath my x. So that means I'm going to go right 4, left 4, I also want to say something. almost forgot. Because it starts with my X, my Pac-Man are going to go these ways. So there's my Pac-Man, Pac-Man, da 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 All right. With that being said, I am now going to say, well, that must be my B squared in the right. Now notice, B squared is bigger than A squared. See, it's not like ellipses. So I take the square root of both sides, and I go up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, you're not going to find this in any math book, but I'm going to call this our hyperbola box. And this box sets the stage for what this hyperbola really looks like. Now, with that, after we're done with that, we're going to draw in our asymptotes. What are those? Well, they're diagonals of your hyperbola box. Now, make them extremely long, and you're going to see why in a minute. Okay? Now, we're going to build on this. When I said right away that because it's like this, it's like this, see that hyperbola? I'm going to call it a parabola, and that's also a parabola facing opposite directions. Parabolas have ver a vertex or vertices. So because it's going this way and that way, this asymptote tells me how wide this parabola is on this side, how wide it is on this side. Now this and this are going to be our vertices. That's this dot and that dot. So now I'm like, oh, okay, now I'm going to follow the asymptotes. And then go like this, and then go like this. Okay, don't get lazy and go like this, because then you don't understand what an asymptote is. An asymptote is kind of like a gravitational pull for the graph. It's trying to reach it, but it can't. So 
So don't get lazy. All right, well, this is a vertex and this is a vertex. So that's plus or minus or zero. Now, where are the foci? We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's talk first about the transverse axis and the conjugate axis. Now, the transverse axis is, is the axis where the vertices are. Well, in that case, that would be this one right here. That's the transverse axis. So, just so you know some parts, where did we get that from? Well, we got that from here. The square root of 16 is 4. So we know this is 4, and we know that's 4. So that's kind of telling us, okay, the conjugate axis must be the other one, and that's true. It's this one right here. And I know this is 5, and that's 5. So if they ask you, like, they tell you the conjugate axis is 10, well, then you know this is 5, which tells you this is B, and this is my A. So there's a lot going on there. So this is simply the axis where the vertices aren't. Okay? Now what's the center? Well, that's pretty easy. But being nice to you and keeping the center of these just right here at 0, 0. So now, two things left. Foci, asymptote. Well, let's find the foci first. Remember, a parabola always has a foci. That's the pistol. And we have one over here, too. We're like, okay, well, where is it? Well, hyperbolas have this other equation, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Have you seen that before? Looks like the Pythagorean theorem. Here's the thing. It just isn't, because we're not dealing with right triangles. Uh, but here we go. a squared is 16. B squared is 25, so I get 41 equals C squared, bada boom, bada bang, do the right thing. So I know that's a weird number, but let's talk about this. The square root of 36 is about, well, it is 6, so what's this? Well, the square root of 49 is 7, so I'm going to say it's like 6.5. I know it's not perfect, So if this is 4, then I go 5, 6, 7, and it's right in here. There's a vertice, I do the same thing. Four, five, six, seven, it's right about in here. So where are my foci? Plus or minus the square root of 41, zero. Now here comes some fun, asymptotes. Remember y equals mx plus b? I hope you do, because it's hinging, your understanding of asymptotes are gonna be hinging on your understanding of linear functions, which you've been dealing with forever. Well, here's one of them, and you ask yourself, okay, what are the two things I need to know to find the equation of the line? I need the slope, and I need the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is easy. It's right there, it's zero. So one of my asymptotes is going to be y equals mx plus zero, which means that's not even part of my equation. So really, this is a fancy way of saying find the slope of that line. Now, I'm going to I'm not going to use points. I'm not going to use the slope formula. Rise is 5. Run is 4 because of this. So that is the equation of one of my asymptotes. What about the other one? Well, the other one right here, once again, I can see my y-intercept is 0, but i got to figure out my slope. Well, this time, with this line, i got to go up 5, so it's 5. But then I have to go left 4, don't forget, left means negative, and there's the equation of the other asymptote. Boy, there's a lot going on right there. 